Hi, here is the complete history of offenses by Ellen DeGeneres. In 2007, a former writer of the 2001-2002 sitcom The Ellen Show spoke of how DeGeneres treated her writers on the sitcom, saying she treated them like shit and continued to elaborate and said, we'd watch her in rehearsals, smiling and winning us over with her charm and comic timing. Then the director would yell cut, her face would fall, and she'd level a glare at the writers. Why do you keep writing these unfunny jokes? She'd hiss. Ellen frequently eviscerated the head writer and boasted of the changes she'd make in season 2, starting with his firing. In October 2019, DeGeneres attended an NFL game between the Green Bay Packers and Dallas Cowboys at the invitation of Cowboys owner Jerry Jones. While at the game, she was seated next to former President George W. Bush. Her friendly interactions with Bush, captured by stadium cameras, attracted criticism due to the opposition to same-sex marriage by Bush and his administration and his responsibility for the war in Iraq and its associated torture and civilian deaths. Actor Mark Ruffalo was among those who criticized DeGeneres' friendship with Bush. In response to the criticism, DeGeneres explained her friendship with Bush in a monologue on her show. During the segment, she indicated that she believes personal relationships should transcend political differences and compared her friendship with Bush to her friendships with people who wear fur, a practice she does not condone. A version of the monologue, digitally altered to include images of victims of American torture and civilians displaced by the war in Iraq behind DeGeneres, was later distributed over social media. Dutch makeup artist and vlogger Nikki de Jaeger, better known as Nikki Tutorials was interviewed by Matthijs van Nieuwkerk on the talk show De Wereld Draw It Door and spoke of her experience on the Ellen DeGeneres show, saying, Let me say that there's a big difference between this show and Ellen DeGeneres, and I'm saying that in favor of this show. It's nice that you say hi before the show. She didn't. When van Nieuwkerk asked if DeGeneres was cold and distant, De Jaeger agreed. In April, De Jaeger spoke about her experience again in an interview with NC Magazine, saying, Call me naive, but I kind of expected to be welcomed with confetti cannons. Welcome to the Ellen DeGeneres show but instead I was greeted by an angry intern who was a bit overworked. I was expecting a Disney show, but got Teletubbies after dark. She also said she was not even allowed to use the restroom. Every guest at Ellen's had a private toilet, but I didn't. I was not allowed to use the nearest toilet, because it was reserved for the Jonas Brothers. In March 2020, during the COVID-19 pandemic, DeGeneres drew backlash online for her comparison of self-quarantine to jail on her remote show. In May 2020, videos of past interviews of the Ellen DeGeneres show began to resurface online and they drew ire for what some characterized as DeGeneres mistreating and manipulating her celebrity guests. Some sources claimed the most damning of which was an interview with Mariah Carey where it looked as though DeGeneres had forced Carey to reveal her pregnancy on live television. It began when Ellen asked Carey about rumors that she was pregnant, and Carey responded awkwardly don't discuss that. When she expressed her protest to addressing the topic, DeGeneres proceeded to bring out a bottle of champagne to make a toast to Carey not being pregnant. Carrie began to resist drinking the alcohol and she then proceeds to pretend to drink it. DeGeneres exclaims you're pregnant. Carrie later confirmed to the public that she was pregnant. Weeks later, she had a miscarriage. Something that was emotionally devastating for her. Australian radio host Neil Breen recalled how DeGeneres staff walked on eggshells during the show's 2013 visit to Australia. And that he was told. Now, Neil, no one is to talk to Ellen. You don't talk to her. You don't approach her. You don't look at her. He stated that the whole thing was bizarre. In March 2020, the series faced allegations of not communicating with crew members about pay during the pandemic-induced shutdown. An article was posted on BuzzFeed News on July 16, 2020, in which 10 anonymous former employees accused DeGeneres show of being a toxic workplace. Accusations included being fired after taking medical leave or bereavement days to attend funerals, as well as racist comments and microaggressions. One employee stated that be kind bullshit only happens when the cameras are on. It's all for show. I know they give money to people and help them out, but it's for show. 
On July 27, it was announced that Warner Media would begin an internal investigation of the show's workplace following the allegations in response. DeGeneres published a letter apologizing to her staff. A second BuzzFeed article came out on July 30, 2020. In it, 36 former employees accused the executive producers of sexual misconduct and harassment. Some suggested that DeGeneres knew about this, but did not want to deal with it. For someone who's so involved in the show and the creative aspect, and having been in those meetings with her, it's very hard for me to wrap my head around the fact that she doesn't hear the same whispers. Another employee said that she knows shit goes on, but also she doesn't want to hear it. Actor Brad Garrett, who has appeared on the show six times, commented on Twitter that the accusations come from the top and added that he knows more than one who were treated horribly by her and that it was common knowledge. Actress Leah Thompson corroborated Brad Garrett's claims. On August 3, 2020, former producer Hedda Muscat spoke about DeGeneres in an interview with The Rap. In it, she detailed an incident where she witnessed executive producer Ed Glavin screaming at a crew member. She said, he just went off on them. His whole face turned red. We were stunned. She spoke of DeGeneres' reaction. I was waiting for Ellen to say something. Whoa, Ed. Don't talk like that. Do you know what she did? She giggled. She crossed her legs up on the chair and she said, Well, I guess every production needs their dog. And from then we knew. Ed was going to be the barking dog. Her dog. Musk had added. You could just see everybody's faces go stiff. We're professionals. We're adults. We don't need a dog to get us to do our jobs. She was the only one giggling Muscat concluded by expressing her disbelief that conditions will improve behind the scenes on the show because of DeGeneres herself, saying, it will not make a difference, because she is who she is. On August 4, 2020, another BuzzFeed article was released where a former employee said DeGeneres didn't just turn a blind eye but encouraged the mistreatment, racism and sexual harassment. Adding you cannot stand up in front of an audience as large as hers every single day for 17 years and say the words be kind to one another and do what she did. A current employee who remained anonymous said no one is holding themselves accountable. They just made excuses for it. Later that day, former Ellen DeGeneres show DJ and actor Tony Akungboa addressed the allegations saying in an Instagram post while I am grateful for the opportunity it afforded me. I did experience and feel the toxicity of the environment and I stand with my former colleagues in their quest to create a healthier and more inclusive workplace as the show moves forward. Katy Perry, Jay Leno, Ashton Kutcher, Tyrese Gibson, Alec Baldwin, Nigel Lithgow, Kevin Hart, Diane Keaton, Nacho Figueres, Jerry O'Connell and De Rossi expressed support for DeGeneres, which resulted in backlash against them. On August 5th. 2020, actress Rachel Bloom indirectly addressed employee allegations against the Ellen DeGeneres show on Twitter by stating an observation of hers. Just wanna say that I have both worked behind the scenes of TV shows and been the celebrity guest on them and the two experiences are very different. Having a good time being a guest does not necessarily have anything to do with the experiences of the employees. I'm not saying this to put anyone on blast. I just wanted to offer my point of view as someone who's had the amazing fortune to experience both worlds. In 2016, Kathy Griffin published a memoir titled Kathy Griffin's Celebrity Run-Ins, My A to Z Index. In it, she detailed an incident at the Emmy Awards. I'm almost positive a certain beloved daytime talk show host once had me kicked out of a backstage dressing room at the Emmy Awards. I can't prove it, but this person who has short blonde hair, has a mean streak that all of Hollywood knows about. She would later admit in an interview with Access Hollywood that she was referring to DeGeneres. In March 2020, comedian Kevin T. Porter posted a tweet asking people to share instances of DeGeneres being mean and received more than 2,800 responses. On May 1, 2020, DeGeneres former bodyguard Tom Majerkak detailed DeGeneres' behavior towards him in an interview with Fox News. It was very cold and it was very sly and it was actually kind of demeaning in the way that she treats people other than those who are in her circle. It's bugged me for years. 
I see this person come across as being very enlightened and positive and awesome and everybody loves her and is in awe and that's really not the case when you meet her in person. I can absolutely see through interacting with her firsthand that she doesn't care about anybody else as long as she's getting what she wants. On August 6, 2020, a man named Ben Gravelay spoke of DeGeneres being his childhood bully. Gravelay said that back in the 70s when he was 11 years old the then 20-year-old DeGeneres worked as an employee for his mother's recruitment agency and bullied him relentlessly. Of the things DeGeneres would do and say Gravelay said she would criticize my weight. I would try to do homework in the office. She'd call me stupid. She'd call me fat. She would criticize my clothes. I was just a boy and this was a grown woman who took pleasure in seeing me become visibly upset. I don't think there's any excuse for it. I was a defenseless kid. What could I have told her back? One incident stands out in my mind. I was sitting beside her desk. I was drawing. And she criticized the drawings. She said I guess that would look nice if you could draw. He spoke of fearing going to his mother's work because there would be a chance to generous would be there. I would dread going to my mom's office to see her after school or on a day if I was sick and Ellen was there. Speaking of his opinion of DeGeneres he said she was just the meanest, nastiest, most horrible person. As I watched her meteoric rise to fame, people would say how great she was and all I could think was she must be an incredible actor because she was one of the most vile people I've ever met in my life. Who takes pleasure in giving a child's pain? Gravolet's mother and DeGeneres alleged former employer Tana Robinson also spoke about DeGeneres saying she was extremely rude and that she hadn't learned about her son's bullying until a few weeks ago. Robinson concluded by saying I think I probably fired her. Had I known that was going on, I'd have punched her and then fired her. A horrible person does that to an 11-year-old boy. I can't even put myself in the shoes of someone at that age that dislikes children so much or whose ego is so low that she has to smash a child to feel good about herself. A bully is a good word for it. She never tried to bully me because she knew she couldn't. So she bullied him with me not knowing about it. On August 7, 2020, in a television interview with Inside Edition actress and comedian Chris Farah detailed an incident where she served DeGeneres as a waitress at the West Hollywood restaurant Real Food Daily. She said that her boss had received an email from DeGeneres complaining about Farah's chip nail polish on her hand, not in DeGeneres food, and her boss in an effort to placate DeGeneres tried to suspend Farah for two weeks without pay. Farah had decided to quit instead. When the interviewer asked Farah what she would say to DeGeneres, Farah replied what is happening in your life that you aren't already busy with the bountiful grace that is happening to your wealth, your influence. Why do you have the time to mess with someone who was just serving you? Farah in response to the celebrities coming out in support of DeGeneres said I have seen some of the celebrities who came out and been like she has never been rude to me. And I'll be like yeah you're a rich powerful celebrity well she wasn't rude to you I get it but you aren't someone working beneath her. Check this channel for her video apology and written apology. Thank you for watching.